Mobile family looking for answers tonight after a teen was gunned down overnight. The person police say pulled the trigger has killed before and was out on bond. Fox 10 News' Tyler Finger has been working this story for us all day. He's here in the studio. And Tyler, you talked to the victim's father. I did. Make sure you join me every Tuesday and Friday night at 9.30 p.m. on Ock Nation TV. Link is in the description. <sighs> This, the narrative, the mainstream narrative across the board, every one, every bullet point on their narrative is actually the opposite. It's the opposite. If you're tired of wokey woke, Lie, bro, media, make sure you join me. Hit the like button, hit subscribe. Also, join my Patreon. I just started a Patreon, so you guys can always find me. Just got a Patreon, so link is in the description. So everybody, sign up for the Patreon so you can always find me. Also, merch coming extremely soon merch coming extremely soon mobile family looking for answers tonight after a teen was gunned down overnight the person police say pulled the trigger has killed before and was out on bond fox 10 news tyler finger has been working this story for us all day he's here in the studio and tyler you talked to the victim's father i did byron and he's dealing with a lot of heartache tonight he's trying to come to terms that his daughter is gone while trying to figure out why her boyfriend had the opportunity to allegedly do this these photos are how friends and family of 18-year-old Jai Reportis will always remember her. Pictures and memories are now all they have left. The smiling teenager was killed overnight, police say, at the hands of her boyfriend. People loved her. Jai had a lot of energy and... She was quirky, but we loved Jaira. Daryl Portis is her dad. He awoke to the news early this morning that Jaira was shot and killed at the Azalea Court townhomes on Bellingrath Road. That just sounds like a rough spot, man. <laughs> I guess you got to be a son person to know that. The Azalea Court townhomes. <laughs> that sounds like a rough spot, man. <sighs> Uh, apparently, this young lady was a softball player. Her dad was in her life. She was still hanging out in the Zelia Court townhomes with a son man who was out on bond for a murder. A lot of y'all get mad at me when I, especially during the live streams. When y'all, when I say, man, follow, it don't matter, man. You can't fix this stuff. This stuff is unfixable. The only way you can fix this is with a crime bill. Lock these jokers up, throw away the key, and put more police on the streets. That's the only way. No programs, nothing's going to work. This girl, yeah, she deserved to be able to like who she liked and want to date who she wants to date. And I ain't mad at her, you know? She wanted this guy. This is the guy she wanted. But I wonder what she felt about the other person he killed. And maybe it was justifiable homicide on the street level. Maybe he was beefing with some guys and it was, you know, mutual combat. Who knows? But I wonder what she thinks about the other person he killed, if it wasn't. I wonder what kind of conversations they had about the other person he killed. I wonder if she ever thought for a second, like, damn, this nigga might kill me. I mean, or did she just never, 
Or did she think about it and be like, you know what? I'm I'm in love. I just don't know, man. Is the father? What can she? What can the father do about this? What can he do? You can't. In D.C., they got a saying, man. You can't take the D for her. You can't take the D for her, man. Daryl Portis is her dad. He awoke to the news early this morning that Jaira was shot and killed at the Azalea Court townhomes on Bellingrath Road. Since I woke up this morning, it hits you. It's just like a violent shaking inside of you. The person police arrested for the crime is 22-year-old Davon Bray, the same man who Pritchard police arrested back in August for murder. What, what you have to at the time, he was silent as he walked by her camera on the way to Metro Jail. A month after being arrested in that case, he was able to post a $200,000 bond and was released with an ankle monitor. I mean, <laughs> what can dad do about this, man? I'm sure dad was... It, what can you do, man? To keep her away from this guy. And she's a teenager. If you say don't, that's going to make her want to do it more. $20,000 he got out of jail for killing somebody. And the whole narrative across the country, they locking us up and throwing away the key. The racist system. Blah, blah, blah. This system is so friendly to sun men that literally in places like Chicago and other inner cities, they're running out of ankle monitors. Let that sink in. Dudes are getting caught for carjackings, murders, home invasions, shootings. And because of the, you know, the wokey wokesters and the laws being relaxed, these guys are not sitting in jail until their court date. They're on the street. With ankle monitors. So many so that many of these inner cities are running out of ankle monitors. So that tells you two things. That there's a lot of crime, violent crime going on. Because you have to commit a violent crime to get an ankle monitor now. It's not like back in the days. Where you get a, um, for having a dirty urine, <laughs> you get ankle monitor for having a dirty urine. Now it's like. They don't even think about stuff like that. Now it's like you got to like kill somebody to get an ankle monitor. And the cities are running out of them. Silent as he walked by her camera on the way to Metro Jail. A month after being arrested in that case, he was able to post a $200,000 bond and was released with an ankle monitor. A truly innocent victim that he murdered last night. She is the tragedy in all of this because her life could have been spared if he had been held in Metro Jail. On, uh, on the original charge. I do have to push back against what you're saying, Ash. <laughs> she would have been visiting him down at the jail. She probably helped get that 20000 to get him out. <laughs> if when he got arrested, he would have resisted... And you know, the cops, they don't let you go just because you resist. <laughs> and if you get away, they call for backup. And if you get away from backup, they call <laughs> helicopters. And if you get away from the helicopter, they call the dogs. So resisting is futile. But anyway, say he does resist like many of them do, which is pointless. It gets roughed up. She'd have been talking about police brutality, but not just police brutality, but from a racism standpoint, that the reason it happened was because of the color of his skin. <laughs> so this girl right here that got killed, we already know she was she was she was super woke. And you know. There was nothing you could do to save her, man. There was nothing no one could do to save her. This was her destiny. A truly innocent victim that he murdered last night. 
she is the tragedy in all of this because her life could have been spared if he had been held in metro jail on his, uh, on the original charge. Alabama lawmakers have been working on bail reform for years to try and stop the catch and release of violent offenders. Last year, the legislature passed Anaya's law, which would give judges more ability to deny bond. The constitutional amendment will go before voters in November. Mobile law enforcement and prosecutors say the law might have saved Jaira. This is an example of, again, why we need Anaya's law, because... The judge should have had the discretion to hold him with no bond on the first charge to begin with. Okay, so they've been trying to stem this tide. They've been trying to reverse course on this catch and release thing in Alabama for years, which lets you know that it's been this way for a while. The wokesters have been working for for decades. <laughs> So, catch and release. They're going to vote on it in November. That's a long time from now, Jack. Woo! November? And we know in the 2020s, what's that? 10 months? 10 months is like 10 years. Things change so much. Man. November? Jeez. And that's just the vote? Because they could, because you know they probably going to strike it down. They probably going to keep it. Because these people love gluttons for punishment nowadays. They're probably going to keep things the way they are. Jaira. This is an example of, again, why we need Anaya's law, because the judge should have had the discretion to hold him with no bond on the first charge to begin with. Extremely frustrating to have to uh, address the same individual for the same type of offense a second time. For Jaira's father, he wants the law changed, too, after losing his daughter. I really want the next parent to not have to go through this ordeal because it is it is very traumatic. Bray is set to have a bond hearing on Monday where he'll likely be denied bond. Live in the studio tonight, Tyler Fingert, Fox 10 News.